Well, it's spring. Just got the lawnmower out for the first time for the year. So I'm going to go over here is uh, how to do a spring service on it. I do this about every other year. Well, I change oil every year. But I'm going to do a complete uh, engine service with a tune-up kit from John Deere this year. And I'll walk you through how to do it. Here's uh, one of the maintenance kits from John Deere. Mine's an LT160, a 9 model tractor, but they should make it for, I'm sure, most of the tractors that they sell. In this particular kit, I think it was two quarts of oil, an oil filter, an air filter, pre-filter. At the bottom should be a spark plug, and then a new fuel filter as well. I think this kit was about $40 from the John Deere dealer. You can get all these pieces individually. But this year I just felt like going for the convenience factor and just buying the box with everything already in it. Okay, so we're getting down the motor here. That there is the oil drain. Uh, it's a plastic cap, comes off with a quarter turn with like a standard pair of pliers. And there's the oil filter. Now, with the way that this uh, running board is, it's a little tricky to get the oil pan in there. So it's going to make a bit of a mess no matter what way you do it, unless you get a little funnel in there. But, uh, see how it drains out here. Take a little quarter turn with the pliers, and there it goes. So the nice thing about these Kohler motors, at least in this John Deere, is that it has this tray underneath the oil filter here where all the oil that you take out of the filter falls onto there and then it drains out right about here. So if you just break the oil filter loose, there goes the oil, there's a little drain, down in the pan. Now, in case you don't want to go to the John Deere dealer, that's the filter you need. FRAM number, STP number, 3512. That's for a 16-horse uh, Kohler. Now, here's the new filter. Just like changing oil on a car, you want to get a little bit of the oil, put it on the gasket so it comes off next time. Now, normally on a car, too, I fill the oil filter up with oil. But there's really no point here because the filter goes upside down. So just make sure your gasket didn't leave on the old filter housing here. Make sure there's no big chunks of dirt on the gasket surface. And you can put this sucker on. You want to snug it and then the directions are quarter turn more. Now like I said, the kit comes with two quarts of oil. This motor takes 1030, regular 1030 motor oil. The general rule here with the small engines that I've noticed, normally motors that have an oil filter use 1030 oil. The older motors that don't normally use an HD30. But usually if they're being used for cold weather, the older motors call for a 1030. Now these motors don't take the full two quarts, they take about a quart and a half. So after you put the first quart in, for the second quart, you're going to want to keep checking the dipstick until it says full. And the oil goes right in where your dipstick is on top of your motor, which in this case has a yellow uh, oil cap on it to point out where it is. Now, first quart's in. So I'll add a little bit of this at a time. This is the second quart. Okay, let's check this out. Wipe your dipstick clean, thread it all the way on so it bottoms out and the oil sump, take it off, and that guy just grabbed right in the frame the first time. After you run a little bit, just recheck it to make sure the oil is still full after everything settles into the engine. 
So the next thing comes in the kit is the oil, is the uh, air filter. Sorry, air filter is housed in this housing right here. It's as simple as undoing this cap. And there's where the air filter lives. See, it has a bit of junk on it here. It's another wing nut here. holds the air filter on and it just slides off. Now something to note here, this is actually two pieces. There's a foam outer piece you can see here and then an inner, actually a regular air filter. Most small equipment has a setup like this. Now you may notice even though the outer filter is pretty dirty, the inner one's in decent shape except for exactly where it sucks the air in. Now, even though it's clean, it's been on there two years, I'm going to change it anyway. Now you want to do is just dust out all the debris that's here. You especially want to make sure you don't have any on the inside of where the filter lives, because then that'll blow right into the motor when it runs. Then here's your new primary air filter. the new pre-filter right on there. Put your first wing nut back on, cinch that down, and that seals this filter to the bottom of this plate. And then this is your cover, and you can see it actually only draws air in from where the cooling fan is. Now on this track, that cooling fan is actually sealed up to the hood. It really does a pretty good job of keeping the filter cleaner than it would be if it was just an open filter. And that's all there is to that. Now moving on to the other side of the motor. Next thing I'll change is the fuel filter, which is located right here. On these mowers, the fuel tank's actually in the rear, and this is actually the fuel pump, which then goes the line over to the other side of the carburetor. And all you need for this is another pair of pliers. And these spring clamps, all you have to do is squeeze them and move them to the side. And usually by twisting the filter a little bit, it'll break it loose to the fuel lines, and you can pull it off. Now you're going to get fuel out. Just don't smoke. Be, you know, have some common sense, and you're not going to hurt anything. Put your thumb over it, problem solved. Now you can put this end in first. Put this end back into the fuel feed. There we go. And you slide the clamps back on. And your fuel filter is done. Okay, and the last thing that comes in the kit is a new spark plug. Now this is really the only thing on this track you're going to need a special tool for. I don't really consider that special. But if you don't already have a basic socket set, you're going to get a 5 8 spark plug socket. Now what makes spark plug sockets special is first of all they're deeper. There's a piece of rubber inside of them that will hold the plug, protect the ceramic electro, or not the electro, the ceramic insulator on it while you're wrenching on it so it doesn't break. And you also have these hexes on the back so in tight areas you can just put a wrench on it. Now all you have to do here, on the right side of the mower, you see this hole in the engine, the spark plug wire goes in there, you now with the hood it's a little tricky to get off. There you go, this spark plug wire, on the tip of the spark plug using this wrench. Okay, so here's the old spark plug, as you can see, it's pretty hammered, pretty black. But it's been in there for two years. Here's the new plug. Champion number RC12YC. Their stocking number is a 71 if you go to a part store. Some stores might use either or. As you can see, big difference. Normally on small engines, I don't bother gapping them. They're normally whatever 
the plug is already set at. If you feel like checking the gap, go for it. Like I said, personally, I've never had a problem. I'm sure someone will probably say, oh, you got to gap them all the time. I'm just going from experience here. You just want to make sure, I can't really show you down the hole, but you want to make sure there's no debris you're going to push into the threads. Other than that, you just uh, put it back in, put it to snug and a little more. You don't want to strip the head out because the head's aluminum, and you have a whole bunch of problems. And after your plug's in, all you have to do is take your spark plug wire, find the end of the plug, and push it to here, click. It shouldn't come off right away, then you should be able to tug on a little bit without it coming off. Well, the actual service is done on the mower now, but there's a few other things you should really do. The first is blow out all the debris from the engine bay. The reason you should do this other than just trying to keep it clean is that the grass and stuff actually gets lodged into the cooling fins on the motor. And since most of these mowers are air-cooled, it could actually wreck the motor doing it. Plus, it keeps a lot of... It's like keeping them starting a fire, keeping stuff building up. So, I mean, you could do it with a brush. I like to use an air compressor and just blow everything out. Get a little more pressure here. side, they'll tell you what they're rated to. This one's rated 12, so it's filled up to that. If you're over or under, you can actually tear up your grass on top of destroying your tires. So...